ten. It's crazy how spotlight caches of made tokens almost worthless. Yes, despite the very heavy, immense amounts of complaining about the spotlight token system from a vocal minority, the spotlight token system is that, or the spotlight cache system is that a phenomenal job of making Marvel Snap cheaper and letting resources abound. Lieber Livewire, thanks for the 14 months. Welcome back. Shiji hanging out for over a year. They have a copy of Mystique, which is probably not very useful to them. That sounds lovely. Are you the one who came up with the key idea for spotlight caches? I mean... It's something that I talked about on stream before they implemented it as being a good idea, but at the same time, like, it's not like it's exactly complicated, yeah? get a Patriot bonus here, which is lovely. <laughs> and then honestly, um, I think I do this and then like next turn we go blue Marvel, squirrel girl, wasp, call it a day. All of our Mysterios are fives. We snap again, asking the real questions. I don't know if my body's ready to find out they're also playing Enchantress. casserole. I probably should have put the squirrel girl in the middle since they hadn't triggered the Vormir yet. Victory. He's down on winning all three here. the Proving Grounds chat. Prove it ourselves worthy to proceed to Silver Conquest. Onward, upwards, backwards, forwards.
Just what I gave because I did math. Thank you, Jeff. And chat. I fully expect math to be nerfed to the next patch or two, so use it while you can. I think the why not bass deck is viable in the current I think the why not bass deck is fine if you cut werewolf and play Shang-Chi. But I also think it's just like probably worse than just playing a different, better Shang-Chi deck. So is it okay if you absolutely love the idea of what the deck is doing? Yes, I think so. Oh, not having to worry about Killmonger here is great. Although I'm a little sad my hood didn't die. Oh, I guess the bass is going to come back on five. It's kind of great for us. Any of our threes here would be nice. Oh, I guess that's a three. Fully, fully monkey pawed on that one, huh? Oh, I don't have priority because of the Necrotia. I wanted to Valk them in the middle. Well, shoot. Okay, I think it's this, and then Bast will make this three power, and we'll play her center. Oh, we could Valk the Venom, maybe. Yeah, that's a good shot too, actually. Gives us four more on the left because we fill a path for Dazzler. So let's potentially win the center. Null, null center would get us, but that seems unlikely. It is worth noting we technically don't have anything to break Valk symmetry here in the middle, so if they just play any other card into the middle, we will tie them there and then it comes to a breaker. But we're also at 34 on the left, so a breaker might be something we could win. Sirius, thank you for the 14 months. Appreciate that. Welcome back. Oh, we do have real Mysterio on the left, too. I forgot about that. Yeah, perfect. Then we'll win the breaker, like we said. Perfection. Victory. Clean game. The opponent using their Killmonger early gives us a lot, a lot more freedom to play our cards out aggressively. It's definitely a tool they should be holding. Is the silver, uh, yes. You know what they, you know what they say, chat? Life's a batch and then you die. Strangest sense of deja vu. Plays on three feels bad. Deck really wants Dazzler or Patriot for turn three typically.
Why doesn't Snap Tracker only pick up the opponent's Deadpool variant and not the rest? Uh, I believe it simply um, is only showing variants for cards they've currently played in this game. Classic Shang-Chi, uh... Shang-Chi destroy deck here, by the way. And we'll get, uh, we'll get our monster back in the middle on top of that, so... Neat snap, bud. Oh, do they fill our center on us here? Did, but it's fine, question mark? play for the right than the left my wasp and my mysterio clone are both seven which gets me to 20 on the right and if they re-kill monger here i'm only losing three and then i'm getting plus two i just think it's those the the patriot left or the, the real Mysterio left just keeps them honest, right? So we'll go to a breaker again, which hopefully we win. Yeah, we do. E22-13. How seven? It shows... Uh, it should, Oh, it's not even a breaker because the Killmonger's one smaller. So... Oh, you have to see how these are seven. Yeah, visually this shows seven until the real one flips up. That's one of the things you gotta keep track of is your real Mysterio is actually the worst one when you bash them and then have Patriots in play. Yeah, solid, solid with their frost. Let me show some of that, the flexibility. Nico's the best card in Snap. Nico's one of the most flexible cards in Snap. For sure. Let me see one card in another location here, but I think I'm gonna snap before I play this best. Oh, snap. Yeah, Nico, Nico, last I checked, had a negative average cube rate and right around 50% win rate. Her play rate was about 17 or 18%. So high, high play rate, but in terms of performance, not anything super standout. Yeah, just casual what? This was 6, 6, 12, 18, 12, 15, 16, 7, 18 power bass. No big deal. New Raven, thank you for the 15 months. Welcome back. Oh. 
I think I'm doing this so that way if I draw a five next turn, I can play a five plus a squirrel girl. Could just be utter shit, right? They also got subterranean. I am Iron Man. <laughs> oh, Come on. Almost won it anyways. Well, you see how bad our draw was compared to theirs? And we almost peeled it out. We're up what? 14. We were up, uh... We were up 11. Playing the X-23 out would heavily imply that they are a Killmonger deck thing to think about. Looks like they're the Stature Zabu deck that's leveraging Dracula for some reason. I may need to not snap hands that don't have Patriot or Dazzler. How hard did Bastet Texas get shit on? Very. It was not. It was not a good scene. Playing is out proactively into a Killmonger deck might be wrong. Oh, did I not have to play on the left this turn? In the center? That's a, that's such a weird interaction. Don't know if that changed my line at all, but I definitely thought I needed to play center there. Oh, Lady Deathstrike isn't typically in the opponent's upper range. Miss Marvel, Shang-Chi, Killmonger, I think are probably three of their four missing cards. And then we know Apocalypse is one for sure. Oh, you know what? I should have played the Blue Marvel into the Vibranium Mines, because drawing Vibranium this turn would have been good. Yeah, I would have been able to play Mystique, Mysterio, Vibranium all out. I think I have to leave as is... Do I care? I don't care? If I had a Vibranium, we would have had a 1 6 to play out here, which would have been nice. Terrania come up in discussion. 
my number one thought is I think it's just a good example of the fact that many Marvel staff players don't like being reminded of the idea that they don't retreat frequently enough. S statistically speaking, Subterranea does not turn over half of your draws into rocks, dear person that's throwing out stats that are just objectively wrong in my chat. You're right that you could low roll a little bit and have over your half your draws be rocks, but you can low roll in Marvel staff in a few different ways. You should just be retreating when you do. And that, that's not an answer that a lot of people like to hear, but like... There's, the reason why I think so many people hate Subterranea is because it's painfully obvious that they need to be retreating and people hate the idea that they should be retreating. So Subterranea, unlike a lot of other locations, isn't a location that you can talk yourself into staying. Because it's just like very like, oh, okay, we're dead here. We need to leave. I mean, I think comparing it to Magic the Gathering is unreasonable because Magic the Gathering's resource system just like is dated, archaic, and fucking sucks. So like, put it bluntly. Ah, oh, it's such a... Our, our start was so good here, and then Adeland. Easiest way to tell our hand is excellent. Adeland flips up. Um, but, like, to me, Magic the Gathering resource variants would be a lot more forgiving and less frustrating if, when I got flooded or screwed, I could just retreat for half value, right? I'm just gonna take a mulligan. You not want to play a weird world game? Escaped. Have your, have your silver ticket. I'm gonna go next. Upside, upside of the proving ground, just get to skip those games. I mean, honestly, as someone who's played other card games that have resource variants in them, if you compare Magic the Gathering to Pokemon, for example, like the resource variants in Pokemon is way less brutal than Magic the Gathering. Heck, I've been playing a lot of uh, Genshin Impact TCG in my off time, and that one literally involves rolling dice to, to gather your resources each turn and play your cards. Even it has less variance than Magic's land system does. Oh, snap. Yeah, that's definitely true too, Sephiroth. There's some confirmation bias in the Subterranea games where you remember the low rolls of 3x rocks, but you don't remember the ones where you just like never see one or only draw one. That's 100% 100, 100 the case too. It's an ev evolutionary bias that we remember things that are negative more, uh, more so than ones that are positive or neutral. on a subreddit there was on a triad about how snap was a bad game because locations made you lose and you have no agency I, I actually think that that's one of the many incredibly innovative things about marvel snap as a game is marvel snap from a core design perspective took a large part of the variance that's inherent to a card game and moved it from your deck to a third party thing that you have some control over with deck building choices like Storm or Magic and such, but not, not always, right? Marvel, Marvel Snap, as far as decks are concerned, is probably the most hyper consistent card game you will ever touch. Your decks do the same thing in a lot of the games. And then in turn, getting that variance that's important for not making card games feel samey from another spot is quite phenomenal. That's one of, one of the things that really made me fall in love with Snap as a game was like, oh, this is great. This is smart. Like, 
this deck has felt good to me lately because it uh, it goes wide, it dodges Shang, it can still contest big stats with Iron Man Valkyrie. Yeah, I think all things all things considered, I think this archetype is quite reasonable. I think that's a, that's a very good articulation there in chat of why why it's reasonable. They have lots of energy, chat. <laughs> okay, it all it all makes sense now. I understand. I understand. Does Corvus Glaive have to be on the board to give you energy trout? He does not. He just has a visual reminder there when he is there. How much do you have to pay me to play Agatha on Saturday? I think the prize pool is like $1,200. So I think if you paid me and each of my teammates the same amount we would get for getting first, they would be okay with me playing Agatha. I don't know what that number is. I'm not really playing the tournament because of the pricing, but that's the number. How much? How much to throw the tournament? Whatever first base. <laughs> No, you're not allowed to crowdfund it. Victory. I only, I only, I'm not new to Twitch yet. I only allow, I only allow crowdfunding for hitting goals that I actually want to achieve. Because I don't, I don't do crowdfunding things enough. If we do a stupid goal like that and we crowdfund it, we will, uh, we'll hit it. I'd rather, I'd rather save it for crowdfunding something I actually want to do rather than doing something stupid and terrible. Like why? Like we we're probably gonna do another charity stream at some point this year. I prefer. I personally prefer to save my predatory monetization so it can be harnessed for some form of good. How many decks do you bring in turn? You can change decks every single round, every single match. I mean, not even every single round, every single match is, uh, is the case. Would you snap that turn one pass? Uh, depends on the matchup. I think my deck has a solid linear game plan into whatever we're playing against. Snapping turn one pass is fine. not like the concept in general of doing timed streams where they hold the content creator hostage for the time that you're there. It's not, not super into that concept. It's a very, very unhealthy practice to get into. Even when you do it somewhat right where you're like sleeping on stream, you're still not sleeping nearly enough.
Very separate clients for the Genshin TCG and paper cards. There's not, unfortunately. Yeah, you have to, um... You have to play, like, 30 hours of... 20 or 30 hours of regular Genshin RPG in order to play. In order to play the Genshin TCG. It's one of its biggest limiting factors. But I've been a casual Genshin player for almost two years at this point. Here on the Elden Ring DLC coming. Yeah, I'm not a big FromSoft guy. I wanna, if I wanna feel angry while I play a video game, I'll just play Marvel Snap or another card game. I play when I play non-card games. I want them to be. I want them to be things that will generally always have a good session of play. Uh, I think we do this. And then we go Patriot plus Second Hood. Then we can Valk over here. Sounds great. Rhubarb Toast. Thank you for the 11 months. Welcome back. They did not have an Accelerant. That's probably a death knell for them. Victory. So Pokemon. Yeah, MOBAs are another good way to feel angry while you play your video games. I don't want, I don't want my single player game to make me feel angry. I want it to make me feel happy and accomplished. All right, gamers, we're going to play some more of this one because I'm having a good time with it. We're going to take a quick ad break before we do the to pay some bills. Thanks for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in 120 seconds. YouTube gamers, make sure you tap the like button if you're enjoying what you see. Appreciate the 200 and change people that have done that so far. The upside downside of having a couple of different lifestyle games that I enjoy is I basically don't have any time to play other things. Like Genshin, Genshin and Star Rail and Snap, they have like infinite content built into them. So like there's a bunch of other games that like look good and they look like reasonable games, but I'm probably never going to try them or at least not for the foreseeable future. My list of, of non-lifestyle games I intend to play at some point when time permits is like Spider-Man 2, God of War Ragnarok, uh, the Horizon Forbidden West DLC I need to do at some point. I enjoyed the first two parts of that series. There have been a lot of, lot of good-looking games. I'm glad people are having fun with it, but I'm just like hammering things that I already know and I like. Actually, actually, in my small amounts of not not Genshin time, I've been working my way through a new game plus in Witcher 3. Making making better decisions, hopefully get a better than mediocre ending. You played the Yondu Gladiator deck recently? I've not. With uh, agreeing to play in the tournament this weekend, I'm mostly playing things that I think are competitive or reasonable that I could play on Saturday. So I'll probably do viewer next submissions on Monday again and then spread our range a little bit more on Tuesday. Third Ferguson, thanks for the 10 months. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, Hades was all right. I like escaped from hell. I don't, I don't really enjoy. I don't really enjoy, um, the repetitive playing through the same levels on roguelites. So like, I'll like play through them once. I got like two and a half hours out of Hades, which for the price of an indie game is fine. I enjoyed it. I actually really liked Transistor and Bastion more than Hades. Transistor. Transistor is a masterpiece of a video game that enough people haven't played. Super Super Giant just kind of doesn't miss in general. They're very good at what they do. Yeah, Trans Transistor is my favorite game of theirs that they made. Not close. I keep the extra energy going, I think. 
I should zap them here. Well, they're also a Patriot deck. Interesting. Interesting. If they're a super scroll deck chat, we're just gonna take our loss and move on. Our deck, our deck is fully and completely hard countered by super scroll. Uh, looks like it's probably a beer, which is good news for us. I got the irresponsibly caffeinated title I may have complete. They really do have something for everyone. In terms of that kind of stuff. Snap. I'm gonna snap. I've got Bastard Patriot. That puts us ahead in the mirror. Who's gonna address the elephant in the room that is this matches proof of deck-based matchmaking? Right. Fine. Those are my favorite types of comments. The person, the person who currently has 1,900 people watching him on Twitch, queued into a mirror match. The only, the only explanation for this is that the system is rigged. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be greedy and bass here. They might be able to fill the raft this turn, but. Mother of God. Peak, peak left side raft gaming chat. Abs absolute peak left side raft gaming. I think I want to hide that I have a mystique with this Patriot. Yeah, I think I was going to take a draw. Now we'll play these out, because if I draw a five next turn, I want to be able to play a five. Actually, do I sit on the Mystique? Because if I draw a five, I can go Mystique the five Squirrel Girl Wasp. Mystique the five Squirrel Girl Phil Wasp. I think I, think I hide the Mystique for cube equity purposes. They fill this, they go to 18. They could realistically be at 26. This is seven. Each of these is plus six, which would be 14. It's only 21. But at the same time, I'm adding four over here up to 16.
You could Valk the left. The Mysterio Clone's bigger than the road. I can't play the Mysterio Clone anywhere, Chad. Do you see how full my board is? I don't really care. I don't really care about every match. Let's just play it. I want to get out of this and play a match that can actually matter. I think we probably lose to Valk left plus real Mysterio middle. I think is the, the one we have to worry about. But they, all, they also played the real Mysterio on turn two, so they didn't really have a ton of force on it where they were going to put that. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't count out that outcome, but it worked out. Noodles! My Dazzler he got two? I think I'm not. I think we'll probably bast on two. We draw anything other than Blue Marvel and I'm happy to have waited to bast. Yeah, that game was close and we didn't have a usable Raft Guard is a good, a good shout out. We'd have had one had been absurd. Stay safe out there, Crumble Kate. We'll hopefully still be here whatever, if slash whatever you come back around. Good luck in picking up some new skills. <laughs> well, well, soup, super rewarded for playing Bass Center, eh? Double Patriot, so that way my Squirrel Center is bigger than their Squirrel Center. Yeah. And then our last turn is just five drop Squirrel. games of Marvel Staff I played in recent memory. Gold Conquest ticket! Alright, Bastriot, you can run it down. You can run it down, Bastriot.
Uh. Yeah. Do that and copy Patriot. Am I getting silver ticket games slower than a few months ago? I don't, um... Generally speaking, I don't like... Like, that's not something I've consciously tracked. And, like, whenever finding a game is slow, you're going to have cognitive bias thinking it was slow. So that's one of those things that I really don't think I should. you should have an anecdotal, an anecdotal opinion on. It's very, it's very easy to have bias towards remembering the negative experience. Time's up. Time's up. Escaped. And then singing about your opponent losing worse than a BME mode. Only if the game had a microphone and I forced my opponent to listen to it. If my opponent hears me singing about them losing, they uh, 100% deserve it because it means they were hanging out while we were playing. You're having a good day. We're doing, we're doing all right, TXZ. More good than, more good than bad for sure. Snap. I'll stamp on the best draw. I got Patriot here too. Solid curve. Mortal Kombat 1 shipped with voice chat for 1v1 ranked game and the option to mute it didn't work for weeks. Holy. Parker! Parker! I have to play right this turn because they're likely an Annihilus deck. Combat one shift mute function was punching the person next to you at the arcade machine. <laughs> oh, they got our marble from the daily people. Yeah, it's a rough beat. Ten. This is that much. 
Flip it, ship it, rip it, flip it. They also hadn't decided. Uh, should we block the screen, shit? Should we block the screen? Oh, it feels like we should have blocked the screen. Oh! Sometimes lucky, we want a New York coin flip for eight cubes. This is it, chat. This is where it all turns around. They definitely should have played Shadow King in the middle, right? Victory. Because even, even if I left, even if I left both hoods here, the negative 10 still means they're losing, right? Whatever. So I got, I made, I made, I glanced over at my Twitter and I got to share this with you. I just want improvements to the current system, like more, all right, hold on one second, let me click. Uh, after you plug your next turn, get the end, sorry. I just want more improvements to the current system, like more tokens refunded on duplicates, more tokens on weekend missions, and or more free credits to get more keys. Before anybody says it, no, I don't want second dinner to give out every card for free. I mean, like... That's what, you're, that's what you're asking for, though. Like that's that's the that's the result of your request. Like don't don't tell me it's not what you want when it's what you're asking for. <laughs> like, Damn it, best. You're the reason we can't have nice things. A uh, iron lad is called obsidian. It doesn't have any other effect here. Yeah, Squantum Tunnel will change here. This would be three, four, five, six, only 12 here in the middle. If the Enchantress be left, I end up at, they're at 20, whatever. Yeah, I, I don't think I can win here. I think we're, I think we're likely dead. We're definitely dead to an Enchantress. They can Annie and Enchantress. Yeah, they can with Zabu, can't they?
Oh my god, we lost because Shang-Chi. Pa Patriot let Shang-Chi kill the demon. And then the demon dying lost us the Stark Tower. Their last card has got to be a Lyoth, right? Or, uh, Nihilus, I mean. struggle to articulate about the current system and it's harder to get specific cards. So while that's true, the old system where you could get specific cards on demand wasn't faultless. Like, a core issue with the previous system was simply the fact that there was no incentive to ever get cards ahead of time, which led to a lot of people just having cards, just having, never buying anything, right? before you were just like super encouraged to hoard everything. Like it was, it was a very real problem under the previous Marvel Snap system that people just didn't ever spend their resources. If a, if a card wasn't literally high evolutionary, people did not want to spend resources getting it kind of how the old system worked. God, we're just fucking dead again. Yeah, this is, this is unfortunately not a deck that I can reasonably play on Saturday because it's just too soft to Enchantress. I don't, I don't want to play something that just like just eat shit to a specific tech card. That's a bad place to be for a tournament. This is, this is the style of deck that unfortunately tends to be at a bit of a disadvantage inside of Conquest because if your opponent elects to play your hard counters, you're going to have a bad time. You can work around them a little bit with good player if, like, your opponent takes, like, this This opponent took a big risk in an 8 cuber, so, like, we're probably going to be able to sneak out one of the next three games and get a little bit lucky, but we're only in that position because our opponent took an unnecessary risk in game one. Honestly, I probably should have, this is a play they've made in other games. I probably should have bet on them just punting the left and bounced the right, or punting the right and bounced the left. Why did you show us that tweet, Jeff? I'm still laughing about it. <laughs> Would Cosmo be good to counter Enchantress? So again, Cosmo to counter Enchantress is the type of thing that would be good and meaningful to do if Marvel Snap was a game where sideboards existed, meaning you could adjust your deck to help your specific bad matchups against problem cards. However, in reality, where I live, no, it is not good or smart for me to choose to make my deck worse generically into the field for the sake of being marginally better against specifically Enchantress as a tech card. You should not make adjustments to your deck every time, every time you run into something that's bad for you. How often with the sideboard? So like, here's the thing. Like that's, I, I apologize to the people that have had to hear me repeat this, repeat this way too many times. Whenever people are like, you can't have sideboards in Marvel Snap because the sideboards would all, it would just be all tech cards. I feel like I'm kind of taking fucking crazy pills because we already live in a universe where the game is all tech cards. It's not like... You don't, like, you look at the decks that are currently good, and they're already the decks playing those cards. So yes, there would be some tech cards inside of sideboards, but also what they would really do as sideboards would allow you to have counterplay into the things that, would allow you to have counterplay into the things that people are already doing and playing, right? 
Yes, a sideboard would be significantly better for decks that are weak to specific tech cards than it is for decks that are good at playing tech cards. Is it not Valk Wasp in the vault? Maybe, maybe that's better. We're rambling here. Yeah, that's, prob that's probably true. I mean, saying that spotlights are better for people who aren't you when you're on the edge of collection complete without being a whale, it sounds like the spotlight collection is pretty good for people like you. Like, being on the edge of collection complete without spending significant amount of money is pretty I solid. Am Iron Man. Tainted Doc, thank you for the 14 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. All right, we eked out the Enchantress, bat the Enchantress Echo matchup because they fed us eight cubes in the second game. Sometimes, sometimes lucky rubber ducky. One of the, one of the economic tensions that's logically inconsistent that a lot of people don't get is logically inconsistent is players want to simultaneously own all of the game pieces while also simultaneously being able to play the game and feel like they're getting meaningful rewards while they're playing. And those two things are at odds, right? Because if you have all the game pieces, ergo, there's nothing left meaningful for you to play towards, right? Like the grind, the grind for cosmetics is not as meaningful as chasing game pieces for like 99.9% .9 of people. And you just can't do both of those things at the same time. You know what I can do and do have full control over chat though? These adverts. We'll see you in 120 seconds. We're going to see if this deck can chase down an infinity ticket. Don't go anywhere. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, Stable. I try. The, the Rune Terra dev conversation about how co cosmetics in that game lost money because players didn't care enough about them was interesting. Yeah, and like, R Rune Terra easily had the best, most impressive cosmetics of any digital card game in existence. Like, they were, nobody could be like, they didn't do enough. Like, they were so much better than anything any other card game has done. And I think it's just, when push comes to shove, you have to realize that card games are just a niche market, and that market is not big enough to sustain on cosmetic purchases alone. Game pieces have to be a part of the monetization equation in order for it to be successful. Ots! Thank you for the Hawaii 5 -0. I appreciate the over four years. Thank you for the 50 months. Dana Dockett said, currently building a little under 30,000 piece Lego sets. <laughs> that is a lot of pieces. That's a lot of pieces. That reminded me I need to make my monthly Bezos donation. Chat, make sure you get your Prime subs in. The next, the next three or three months worth of Primes are more valuable before the uh, the Prime cut this summer. You missed it. Twitch has announced that they're cutting the amount of support that Prime will give by at least 10%, but in many non-US countries, it's getting cut by significantly more than that. Um, this 
this assuredly hurts a Black Knight deck more than us, right? Yeah, okay. Victory. AMV, thank you for the 13 months. Welcome back. And D Beard, thank you for the 46 months. If I draw Wasp Hood, Bast, Squirrel Girl, or even Mysterio, I'm pretty happy to have played the draw mode on this. Like anything other than Mystique or Patriot here. They gave me a Black Knight. Sure thing, boss. Thank you. Nailed it. Punished for not, uh... Punished for not playing my what's it called? My squirrel girl. I think I want to fill their hand with crap, chat, yeah? Messes up a blade if they try, draw one and try and play it. Oh, come on. It does cut them off of, uh, hopefully they play their blade center and then Iron Man just puts them in a trash can. they timed out moving forward i'm just timing out people asking for opinions on rebalancing and redesigning cards it is an endless tedium tedious thing that constantly gets asked that's not a useful or fruitful conversation it just goes in a circle and yada 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 now a lot of these black knight decks are full of tech cards so I will need to, um, I will All need to play go. for left and right here still because, uh, we can get Shang-Chi to the center. I say Chang Chi, I meant Chitrus, sorry. Yeah, is it just Blue Marble? It might just be Blue Marble. Is Blue Marble better than Patriot? Yeah, it is. Okay. Victory. Awkward hand for us. Having, having all three of your fives to start is, t is typically not good. You see yourself playing negative Patriot in the tournament. No, I don't think that deck's likely competitive. It was fun. It was neat. Opponent snapped. Think they're filling the center here? I think the Elysium is pretty good for us.
I think I need to split up Patriot and Blue Barvel so that way they can't Enchantress one path and, and beat me here. Do I play around Enchantress? I don't think I do. I think I just do this so we have a ton on the left, right? So a lot of these builds run Enchantress, but with Moon Girl and uh, Kyaria, I think it becomes less likely. I'm gonna do this and just put a mess of numbers on the left and call it a day. Uh, we're good here, right? Yeah. I am Iron Man. I think this match did a really good job of showing the strength of this archetype. It's its ability to have a pseudo Shang-Chi card in Valkyrie that synergizes with our stuff, but also just the ability to fight while going super tall with Iron Man. And we do that while simultaneously spreading out all over the board. <laughs> 